everyone. My name is Alessio. I'm the founder of CEO of Forward Footing, and I'm thrilled to have here today an amazing female professional within the Spanish agri-food tech ecosystem, Lorena Salcedo from Era Foods. Uh, we're going to have a very casual chat as usual uh, to talk about uh, female empowerment within the agri-food tech sector. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Lorena um, to tell us a little bit more about her work at Era Foods and a little about the company as well. Okay. So thank you so much, Alessio, uh, for inviting me. Uh, yes, I am the new product development manager in, at Eura Foods, and we are right now focusing focusing developing the next uh, generation of plant based products. That's fantastic! Mm -hmm. And you guys are based in Barcelona. Um, and uh, where when when did you actually start working also at Eura? <laughs> I started almost a year ago, uh, last January. And yes, it has been very, very productive and very pleasant to, to work at Eura. Fantastic. So yeah. that leads me to the second question. What did he actually initially inspired you to work at a, a plum based you know, company that I guess uh, uh, back in 2017 when it was founded, uh, mm -hmm. I guess it was a relatively new thing in Spain, wasn't it? Yes, it, it was. But it was a a quickly very very um, popular between between many people. Uh, so I was uh, um, I'm going to to tell you more or less my 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 story with Eura. I, I was working in a meat company, and there I was developing um, plant based meat products uh, because our our comp the, the, that company was in a B two B system so our clients were uh, demanding for uh, vegan versions of some products so i was starting to work there and then uh, someone told me uh, have you have you heard about eura and i said no <laughs> and then i started to to search on internet and and i fall in love <laughs> i really fall in love uh, because it was a different way to communicate uh, for example uh, because he, I don't know in other countries, but here in Spain, the agro, agro food sector is very conservative. So it's more or less, it has been the same during 20, 30 years. <laughs> uh, they are changing ingredients or they are changing, uh, taking out some uh, additives, but uh, more or less, everything is the same. Even, even the way of communicate with people, with customers is more or less the same. So it's very personal. It's, it's, it's like lack of soul for me. <laughs> and I saw a company that was like a person talking, talking with me. And um, I don't know, it was something with, with a mission. And I, I really wanted to, 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 be in a, to be part of a company that has a, a mission itself. So yes, I, I fell in love. And then I, I tried the products and I was shocked <laughs> because it was quite good. I, I, was, I, I had been uh, in that moment, I, I was uh, working uh, from one year ago with, with, with vegan products, with, with proteins, with different proteins, with different uh, mixes of uh, compounds. And I was quite in with the texture of the products, with the with the with the taste, with the experience, and and yes, uh, and then I, I started to follow Eura and I started to see when they open a position that was um, fit to my profile, and and then when I, when it appears and uh, when it appeared, uh, I, I I really got very excited, very very excited. I, I felt like. This is for me. <laughs> this is something you know. There, there, there are some mm, bunches that, that 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 are not usual in their life, in in, in your life, and 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 it was one of one them. Of those. Yes. So yes. <laughs> That's fantastic, was... Loretta. It sounds like it it kind of clicked, right? As in, uh, you just saw potential in what they were doing, and you were like, "I'm gonna make these products ten times better, if yes. not more, <laughs> with yes. my work." Fantastic, which leads me to the set to the third question. I know that you spend quite a lot of time in your in the kitchen, actually experimenting, you know, with new ingredients, spices, and all of that. 
what is the thing that you like the most about your job? Oh, I really like to uh, uh, to experiment. I mean, I'm work and and I'm always asking myself, what if what if we combine this with this? What if if we, if we try this with this? I love that. <laughs> so, so yes, this is my job. I, I mean, we need to be uh, in a, in our in our department. Uh, we need to be a, a very curious mind and a very open mind. We need to talk with many with many people and and and, and listen to a lot of information. You you don't know where where the idea is coming, so you need to just uh, recollect uh, data and then uh, you need to join points. And if you if you try many things, you are going to connect uh, points that are going to lead you to a place that maybe it's not a good place or maybe it's a good it's a good place a good product in our case fantastic sounds like it is very iterative and not boring at all no 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 not boring no. at all <laughs> no, no, no. fantastic so as a young as a young professional you know in the food tech sector what lesson i guess uh, or it was the biggest lesson or the one lesson that you've learned that you would share with your younger selves mm -hmm. uh I have been all my life very polite. Uh, so I was, uh, when I was younger, I was very worried about, oh, if it, I don't know if it is good or bad, I don't know, maybe they don't think that it is correct or not. And the, the, the lesson is uh, don't, don't ask for permission, <laughs> ask for apologize if, we, if it's needed and go ahead. And because sometimes when you want to be disruptive, Almost all times, you need to to have a point of um, of um, um, I don't know how to say it. Um, Boldness, as in you need to go bold and. Yes, you need to go. Out. Yes, and you 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 have to be a little bit careless. Careless. Uh, if you if you if you think that the that the the thing that you are going to do it's is is it's it's good. I mean the point the, the final point is. It could be a very prom promising point. Yes, absolutely. I mean, as you said, I think asking for forgiveness that is better than asking for permission, right? Exactly. Sometimes, I guess, also in the middle of experimenting with it, things, you yes. need to just go bolder and double down on your experiments to see actually if the outcome is the one that you envisioned, right? So. Exactly. And unfortunately uh, for me, <laughs> I'm in a place that, uh, that, that, I, that I feel complete, completely free to, to do whatever I think, whatever I feel that it's correct or not. Uh, and, and this is very important. And I have to say that this is not the case of many people in, in, in my sector. So yes, I feel very, very lucky. That's awesome. And uh, building on this, how has been your experience as a woman, you know, working in the food tech sector? How, how being a woman has shaped up actually your journey uh, in entering this space? As I told you before, um, agro, agro, agro food sector in Spain is very conservative. So, I mean, th there are so many women in the sector. In fact, in my in my in my degree, uh, almost all of us were women, but it was like a profession uh, not to be not not to not, not to be uh, considered to be a leader. So you you will be maybe uh, the quality the quality manager of the um, of the production manager, but almost never you you will going to be something very high in a high position and i think the in my case um my 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 career i i started in a, in the academic sector i started doing my phd and for me it was very was a discovery because it it, it is very in union with my spirit of trying things, trying new things, but it was um, disappointing because it was like um, uh, all the things that I'm doing here, they are going to be published and nothing is going to happen with that knowledge. I mean, it's like lost time. <laughs> and then with the, with the, with a, with a, after my time working at 
conventional company. It was, yes, I was doing some things, but it was not innovative, uh, not, not, not in a way that, that it is right now. So one of my, one of my um, motivations to move to Eura was I, I, I want to work in a company that uh, led me to work trying new things, trying innovative things, and then we can launch them. Uh, we, can, we can show to the world of these results. And I think this is not easy for our women, for, our, for women. I mean, uh, even because I don't know in other countries, but here uh, there are some limitations uh, with gender, but also with age. <laughs> if you are over your thirties, um, you are a little bit dangerous. You are not going to dedicate all the time that the company needs yeah. from you. So yes, I mean, it's, it's not easy to find a place to work plenty uh, with, with plain, um, uh, yeah, with that also peace of mind, yes, yeah. yes, with permission and, and peace of mind that, you know, your work is actually valued and uh, you have the freedom to actually experiment as mm -hmm. well, because uh, in your work, I think is is very important, you know, to actually have that freedom because you never know when you're going to have, you're going to gain that result, right, mm -hmm. that you were hoping for mm -hmm. until you actually iterated, you know, a number of times. So um, that is awesome. And uh, is there any like piece of advice that you would give for women to women who actually want to enter the food tech sector again based on your experience or of what do you have what do you have actually experienced as part of your journey i have two two advices <laughs> in place of one <laughs> uh, the first one is ambition what you want and go for it always and the second one is uh, don't complain uh, about your lack of resources uh, see what you have and do do whatever you can what with what you have <laughs> so yes in, in food sector i mean you, your kitchen is your is your lab i mean you you can start doing things in, in your kitchen it's very it's quite easy you you need uh, uh, temperature uh, measure instrument and no, nothing else i mean you you can start to to make things in your kitchen so this is my my advice Fantastic, mm -hmm. nice, <laughs> sharp and, uh, and neat, <laughs> love it. And uh, speaking of tech, more technical stuff, mm -hmm. why do you think, I know you guys have been playing with extrusion technology, you've developed, you've been using different technology effectively to develop your products. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's important to see the general public embrace innovation within the food system? As in, why do you think also, you know, large players should embrace actually new technologies as part of also uh, how they actually experiment, you know, also with new products. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, in this point, uh, I think that innovation is is like a, an answer of inconformism of the humanity. I mean, uh, uh, for example, the cinema. Uh, we we started with with black and white cinema, then we changed to color because we wanted to see the colors, and then recently we have been playing with the three D the uh, cinema yeah. so because we we want to touch the the characters we want to be in the scene i mean this is uh this is innovation and why is it why is this because it's in, there is inconformism so uh in the in the food sector it's more or less the same i mean uh and it's a it, it's a sector that is very it's quite um vigilate because of the because of the um, the mm, mm, uh, uh, fears of the people. Afraid, yeah, they yes, yes. Of because, yes. but uh, I want to remark that it, 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 as 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 all as as other sectors, um, if we if we apply innovation in the food sector, it's not to going back in the time. I mean, we are going forward oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. So it's very important for us that the people understand that the innovation in food sector is going to take us, to, to lead us to a, to a new place that we are right now. And I think that people is understanding this. And I think they are, they are 
every day trying to inf to, to to be informed uh, in with, with with what why what they are eating what what the what the ingredients are i mean the, i think that something big is thing is changing right now yeah and uh, and actually what do you think are going to be the major changes that will occur in the next let's say 5 years in the food industry i think that the plant based uh, trend it's going to be, it's, it's, it's already not, it's, it's no longer a trend. I mean, it's a, it, it's, it's, it's a path. And I think it's going to consolidate. Um, and, and I think this is the, the major um, change in the food sector. So uh, I, I think, uh, our foresee that, for example, a plant-based based on other sources of protein, other sources of um, vegetal proteins and uh, proteins coming from bioreactions or fermentation are going to be um, are going to be de developed, and I think this is a this is a, the, the the main change that I foresee in the near future. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Lorena, for sharing that. Um, we're fine. We're getting to the end of it. Uh, what are What are you the most excited about in the future of plant based foods? Then, as oh. we talked about quite extensively about it. Uh, for me, it's very exciting that we we are in the second generation of plant based products. I I, I want to explain more of this. For some, for, uh, we consider the first generation the the products that that want want to mimic the meat and they, they have done very, very well. For example, Beyond Burger, uh, Impossible. They have um, they had got a very good experience of like it's meat. But the second generation, we are we are trying to do the same, but uh, with with a better uh, profile, nutritional profile. So this is the second generation. What do you think it's going to be the 10th generation? I mean, <laughs> we are just starting with this. So for me, it's very exciting that we are just starting and in two years, it's going to be completely different. It's going to be, it's going to, uh, to evolve uh, because this, this sector is, is growing so fast that uh, I'm very excited to see what, what is the future in one year, what is the future in two years. And so for me, it's like, wow, we have many, many, many things to do, but it's very exciting to be inside this movement. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can't agree more. And building on this, one question I really wanted to ask is that, and I know is kind of like your little uh, uh, brainchild, if you can tell us a little bit more about this fat analog that you guys have developed, and I know you you were the head and an instrumental part of this project, the, the fat analog made of olive oil. I know it's the world's first one, but can you tell us a little bit more about also the technology there without disclosing you know, too much about it, but just to, to make people understand what it is really? Yes, yes, of course. So uh, we, we wanted to incorporate that solid fat, which, which is, is, is which is technically not possible if you if you are not going to incorporate saturated fats. But saturated fats are related with uh, cardiovascular diseases, so we 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 couldn't do that. So we just create like a, a structure, like a school uh, that uh, could give a a a, 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 tech, um, a structure. Sorry. <laughs> A similar structure, yes. Yes, yes, to the olive oil, which is liquid. So this is a this is more or less in in terms of uh, simple words what we did with the fat analog. We just uh, provide to the olive oil and a structure in order to be solid in the in the into the burger. Into the burger. You see, she makes it so simple, and also in the way she explained it, I'm sure that there's a lot of work <laughs> inside that has gone into it to actually yes. make it happen. Yes, it is because uh, we all of the uh, uh, we we did all of this because all this because we wanted to to not not we, we wanted to the olive oil to keep into the burger during and after the cooking process. 
So it, because you, you you can put the olive oil directly, but <laughs> when you when when you're going to cook it, uh, it's going to be drained. So yes, we, we wanted to keep it into the burger in order to give the burger juiciness. Yes. So this is the point. And we have been working on the fat analog several months and we are very proud of the result. And we are <laughs> we are receiving very good uh, feedback. So yes. And this is no. just the starting point. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Lots Stay of tuned. Sounds like uh, it was a, a lot of efforts, but uh, that, that paid off really well. Yeah. Very last question, Lorraine, and then we'll let you go. I know that the recent pandemic has highlighted the urgent need for resilience and ad adaptability across the supply chain. But mm -hmm. how I wonder, how was the, how did the, the pandemic impact actually ERA and what opportunities do you think it would bring for your company? Okay, uh, the impact. Uh, in, in our business, uh, before the pandemic uh, was 50% retail, 50% food service. So suddenly <laughs> from, one eight, from one day to another, uh, food service was zero. So it, was, um, it has impacted our business, of course. But fortunately also, we have seen a very high increase in the demand of the retail sector. So people are buying our products in the supermarket, which is very good. And the opportunities here uh, is that, uh, I think it's not itself the pandemic, but the consequences of the pandemic. I mean, I think that people right now are more conscious about the impact of, the, of what they do every day uh, on the planet. So one of the things that are, that has more impact uh, is the is the is the the things that we eat. So the decisions that we take when we are in the supermarket are, are very important. So I think that um, there is more people um, thinking more consciously about what they are buying for eating. That is awesome. Lorena, mm -hmm. thank you so much for taking the time uh, to speak with us today. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you to a point where I cannot uh, wait to actually go have lunch now <laughs> and eat some and get my hands on some of your burger, latest burgers. Um, so again, thank you very much and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much, Alessio. Cheers. Bye.